And he says, in Acts, we have visions, dreams, and appearances of messengers or Jesus. In the Bible study magazine, we have Beth Moore, who claims God has personally shown her via direct revelation, quote, visions, slash also gets Voice of the Martyr magazine. And he's read of Muslims coming to salvation by direct revelation of the appearance of Christ, who states he is the way, other testimony through dreams. And lastly, he's got a personal messenger by dream, vision, and appearance declaring Christ as Messiah. As good as the salvation stories sound today, he doesn't see them as possible for today. Not that God can't. And Beth Moore, her visions are new revelation. Can you help his understanding of all of this? Well, I don't, I don't see how you could, you could not see them as possible. And then in the same sort of breath, turn around and say, you can't say God can't. Okay. If you can't say God can't, then he can. And therefore it would be possible for today. So that, I don't know if that's just not worded really well, because it is sort of mutually contradictory there. And, and, and that actually reflects my own, my own thoughts on this. So the short answer is God, or Jesus, can basically do what he wants. Uh, he can do what he wants to guide people. Uh, I, I try not to put the words God and can't into too many sentences. I mean, there are some that I could think of that I could I could do that, but uh, I try not to put them into too many sentences. I think God is free to do what he wants to communicate what he wants communicated at any any given point. Uh, if he does that, he's not going to contradict this thing that he spent, you know, literally centuries using people to record and preserve for us, namely this thing we call the Bible. Uh, he's not going to be in the business of, well, you know, I spent all that time producing that Bible thing, but now I'm going to give Joe, Joe Schmo over here a vision that contradicts that totally. We'll just see what he does with that. I mean, God isn't impish. Okay, he's not going to be self-contradictory. The messaging is going to be consistent. Now, what what I hear in this question, again, and I'll, I'll be honest, what I feel uh, in, in a lot of this uh, is this notion of of sort of sort of opening Pandora's box. You know, like, well, everybody has visions, and everybody can just sort of say, "God led me to do X, Y, Z," and all that other stuff. You know, and I'm real sensitive to that because I have a very low view uh, of that kind of thing. Uh, I would I would say longer answer. I can't really think of a scriptural passage I could produce and actually, you know, whip it out to God and tell God he's violated his own word by sending a messenger to someone or appearing to someone. However, I think the line that needs to be drawn is that binding revelation, okay, that's a key thought, binding revelation on the entire church is no longer happening today. Uh, apostolic authority ended with the 12, the original 12 uh, disciples. Even when they had to replace Judas, it was always, hey, is there somebody here who's been with us from the very beginning, you know, who, you know, walked around with us and, and listened to the Lord? And there's always this connection to incarnation, the period of incarnation. And that ended when the last of those people, John, as far as we know, uh, the last of them died. I mean, you'll see the word apostle used elsewhere in the New Testament. It just means people who are sent, you know, whether they're missionaries or pastors or whatever, that kind of thing. But then even the apostles, this this collective, they're still the 12 that are singled out because they were different. And the reason they were different is because they lived, you know, and listened and were, were taught by Jesus himself. Even Paul, I mean, Paul sort of refers to himself as one born out, out of due time. When he defends his apostleship, it is, that is always the basis. The Lord came to me, the Lord appeared to me, the Lord taught me personally, you know, over the course of, you know, X number of years. I mean, he has to connect what he's saying with the incarnation. There was this, this, this non-negotiable sense that that was the crucial element. We don't have that today. So frankly, I'm not listening to anybody that claims to have received any binding revelation for me in one of their dreams, okay, or, or you know, in some, some experience or whatnot. I'm not going to say God can't do that for the individual, provide some direction. But as soon as that individual starts pretending to be an apostle or, you know, pretending to be some pr prophetic figure with binding information for all believers everywhere, you know, I, that, that, that's how we would view the Bible, Okay, I think there's no scriptural basis for that at all. Again, apostolic authority ended with the 12, you know, Old Testament prophets and apostles. They, you know, they, they had these sorts of visitations, Again, but they were, they were divine revelation that was binding for the whole people of God, which eventually winds up in our Bible. So I don't really, you know, I'm not going to pick on Beth Moore here. I don't put a whole lot of stock in somebody like, you know, Beth Moore telling me she's had a vision, but I wouldn't insist that she didn't either. What I want to hear from her is that this was personal. 
I got a blessing from it. I felt directed in some way. You know, I felt that it was guidance and I, and I, I felt like I needed to obey and I did and the Lord blessed it. I'm fine with that. Again, because she's not telling me she's a prophet for our time, and she's she now has information binding on on the entire believing community that somehow escaped notice when God produced this thing we call the Bible. Okay, that that at that point, I'm just going to tune her out. The Muslim example, as I recall, this was part of the question. I have heard about these things, and and you know, there's some YouTube videos of it, and you know, I, I know people who have not. I know people who've traveled with, you know, certain groups in Muslim countries that, uh, you know, have gone to visit, you know, one or two of the people, you know, who now are pastoring churches, you know, in, in these places who had such encounters. Again, I, I don't really have any problem with that either. I mean, if, if God you know, or the Lord wants to sort of invade that person's life, and I, I, again, I think a lot of those kind of situations are actually what you see, it, it sort of mimics what you had in the first century, where you have sort of divine encounter uh, that, you know, steps into a person's life to call them to ministry or to validate the message of the gospel. I mean, we're, we're in the book of Acts. We see this all the time. Again, they're not claiming that I have some new information outside of the Bible that we need to, you know, append to the Bible. Now I'm, I'm God's prophet here now for the, for the believing community everywhere. We, we have people saying, look, I was a Muslim. I was this. I was that. I was an unbeliever. The Lord showed up and said, basically, repent and believe. You know, I, I, I'm the way. And they obey you know, they, they go start a church. They put themselves at, at terrible personal risk to do so. They they know understand the gospel. They know what it is. They preach it. Again, I'm, I'm not going to say God couldn't have done that or Jesus couldn't have done that. I think that would be way beyond the line, uh, you know, for me to say. So I'm I'm very uh, I'm very open to, to, to these sorts of things. Again, I, I would classify myself sort of as cautiously open. And the, and the, and the cautious part again is I I want to know. I want to hear from the person relating this this incident to me, this this experience. I want to know that they're processing it in such a way that they're not presenting themselves as an apostolic authority. If this is something personal, fine. I, I, I can't, again, whip out a verse that, that would say, God, you shouldn't have done that. Or, you know, God, if you did that, we're going to have to talk about that later because there's this verse over here that, Again, that's absurd. God can do what he wants, but when he does act, he's not going to act in a manner contrary to this thing that he invested so many lives in to produce for us that we call scripture. So it's not going to be any any sort of contradicting message. You know, by the way, people might be wondering, well, what, Mike, what if you had an experience? I would process it exactly the same way. If I had my own experience, I'd keep it to myself. The Lord already knows because he and I have had these conversations, okay? The Lord already knows I'd need, I'd need like repetition, for me to be convinced of anything, that this just wasn't a, a random dream or something like that, because I don't know. I don't know if I could process any experience correctly. Uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it, that these things are about intelligence or intuition or anything like this. I'm just being honest with, honest with God, honest with, with the listeners here. If I had some experience tonight, tomorrow, today, you know, whatever, I'm not going to go claim any authority for it because I don't know that I'm processing it correctly. I really don't. I mean, I'd have to be omniscient to know. I would try to discern some personal direction from it, you know, some some reason for it. But I wouldn't go out, write a book, and get on Oprah, okay, to to promote myself as you know some super apostle now or something like that. I'm not going to go, you know, and claim I have you know access to divine knowledge. Uh, again, th- th- those things are, are are silly. They're absurd. They can, and they, I think they can be really sinister too. So if it was me, I'm just telling you. This is not going to be a shingle I hang out because I don't know if I could process it correctly. 